welcome to the welcome pew. To the pew, where we are going to be. Well, what are we doing like today? Live from Madison Square Ooh. Park. Live well, in front of the Shake Shack. And um, we're going to talk today about where you can buy a shake, and, 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 and it's not a shack. And a burger, and it's not a shack. And um, and also she uh, mentioned in the, in the tour yesterday that um, that uh, it wasn't a, meant to be a permanent. Um, Establishment. It was only meant to be a temporary establishment. I guess um, all establishments are temporary in some way. Um, uh, yep. You know, Except that big temple in the sky. Permanent. Um, but so um, today we're going to talk about uh, the retro room. It's a, it's a YouTube YouTube channel, right? Yeah. Some of you may have seen the retro room. It's a YouTube channel. Uh, what's the name of the guy that does it? I'm not sure what his name is. Um. He, it's dedicated to um, cupcakes, though, and um, I, he he, come, he he just did an episode about me last week. It, he has a pretty impressive um, uh, uh, rate of turning out. He has a he has an impressive production production, right? right. Of, um, and it's every week he has some two or three uh, new uh, episodes on different club kids or different club kid topics. A lot of a lot of uh, episodes on Christina, and then he'll do updates where he'll. Um, He'll talk about a certain club kid, and then people will like write in questions or whatever, and then ask some questions, and then he'll, he'll update the um, the episode. And um, they're, they're, I mean, Ernie thinks they're boring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I yes, I will say that I think they're boring. I think that, and I'm not saying this to be you know mean or hurtful to the uh, author of the Retro Room. I'm just saying that. <laughs> You know, the club kids were this, this this crazy group of people that did outrageous and outlandish things. And he manages to make it all seem really dull, like it, the way he I, presents it. I think it's presented in that kind of um, journalistic, non-editorializing way where you don't, you know, you don't, in, you don't interject your own feelings too much to it. You know, you're just, like, just the facts, man. You know, which is kind of a boring way of doing it. it you know, but even but he, I think he's trying to die. I think he's trying to do do, uh, do it like an like an honest journalist way. You know, journalist way. Well, I, I can appreciate that as a journalist, uh, but I think that the topic uh, lends itself to more voice uh, in terms of the presentation of what he's doing. So, what do you mean, like voice? In, in journalism, voice means that you have like a, it's like an attitude that you have to what you're writing or saying, and you're saying it with like a type of personality. You are injecting some of your own personality, um, and not necessarily your own personality, but a personality right. into it, like whether it's your own or an invented one. Right. Because it's more interesting because the topic read. merits that. Now, like say, for example, if you're writing about Shake Shack, you know, you're not, it's like it's supposed to be fun. You're not going to write some... Really Unless I guess you're to the New York Times or something. Uh, even the New York Times writes with voice. Like if you read a lot of voice, I mean New York Times articles, they will have a, an editorial voice to them. So you kind of have to know when to interject a voice and when not to. Like if it's a murder on you know, on the freeway, then no, you don't interject some attitude voice on it. But if it's club see, kids, then see that's maybe where Project you do. X comes in. Because with Project X, that's exactly where we were. We would interject that kind of attitude. Really. <laughs> right, because we were hot. No, because we were, you know, <laughs> rebels. Trying to stir up. So, I did think that the presentation is dull for the for the episodes. I wish he could, like, somehow spice it up. Yeah, I, I haven't heard anything, um, anything new, but I guess I, I wouldn't. Um, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't watch it. No, no, no. And I, I've watched several of them, and um, I've watched almost all of them. And, and I, 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 pre I like the way that he will do the updates of, like, you know, the Christina updates, and where like apparently one of Christina's um, old relationships, um, woman, I guess. So I only remember Christina being in one relationship, and that was with Max. Remember Max? No. Max was a a nurse, um, and. Uh, <laughs> She was, I, I guess she was a lesbian. I, I, she was like a, a um, she was a woman that looked like a man, and it made sense that, that she was, he was with Christina. And I remember at one point he was a man that looked like a woman. I remember one t at one point, Andy Anderson, um, I promoter back then, um, was joking around with Christina and Max, and they and <laughs> she, Max was talking about um, opening up uh, um, a. A string of apartment buildings called um, 
uh, Pat, Pat, Pats and Max, Maxie Pats or something. And because uh, Max called Christina Pats for some reason. And um, don't ask why, I don't, I don't know why. But um, they were just, they were just this very weird a couple, you know, called Max and Pats, Max and Max. So what I would say to the retro room is that I think that you need to spice it up a little bit by interjecting an editorial voice because the topic is so outlandish that it's not you're not serving it well by having this really kind of he references, straight down he references the, the pew off, of very it. often uh, yes because he watches it yeah um, so um, we will see how many times we are referenced now <laughs> we're right back and now a word from our sponsor. Welcome back to the pew where Ernie is going to open up that laptop and we're going to find out the bitch. And this bitch is Martin Marley. And do you guys remember Sue Sherman from the world? Well, uh, of course, Sue Sherman, um, known uh, to, my, to other people as the woman. That's the woman, right? Sue Sherman? That's her, that's her name, the woman. What woman? Sue Sherman was the woman. The woman who did what? That was her, her, her club name, oh, okay. the woman. All right. And she was. What does she look like? She was a large woman. She worked at Area. Also, she um, she was at she worked at Area. Uh, she was in the window installations. Um, I remember the one the one particular one was the um, roadside roadside attractions. I think was the name of the theme, and it was um, all that midwestern kind of highway stuff. And she was a um, Miss Tasty Swirl thing with the, with the ice cream hat. She was like. Kind of a big woman with like the white, with like a white um, ice cream, you know, Dr. Smock kind of okay. thing. And then so clearly, woman. Michael remembers. Yeah, her. <laughs> and she also worked at. She worked for me at the tunnel, um, and I remember having a party with her, uh, and um, she um, where it was called the woman and her airs her dirty laundry, and she um, had we had uh, strings across the tunnel basement where she hung her dirty laundry across the tunnel basement. Simpler times. So yes, I remember. I remember Sue Sherman, the woman. Why do you ask? We want her. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a um, an obscure. Um, yeah. But I like you know the more obscure the better. So. Um, See you next time. Bye. <laughs>